Hey, welcome to the Book of Dad Radio Show. I'm Dr. Robert Benson. As always, before we get started, we want to say thank you to Jehovah. Thank him for his son, Jesus Christ. Thank him for our families. Thank him for work and our ability to do the things we're able to do. Book of Dad Radio Show and the engineer extraordinaire, Eddie G, is hanging out with me. Hey, Eddie. Hey, what's up, brother? How you feel, man? <laughs> I'm doing great, man. I'm doing great. I just well, want to let you know amen. you're fired, man. You're fired three times per day, man. <laughs> How's that? What did I do this time? <laughs> With your technical stuff, man, you fired me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, hey, I promise it to do a little better now. I mean, I want to stay with the Nazca team, the greatest team on earth. You know what I'm saying? Okay, I'm with you. <laughs> All right, cool, cool. Hey, listen, man. Last year, 2020, was one of the craziest years ever, okay? Mm -hmm. And then 2021 mm -hmm. started off with a real bang, did it not? Yes, it did. And yeah. then, you know, yeah, I, I'm telling you, it's like, so now we're at the, still at the beginning of uh, 2021 or every year, but which marks a significant month in history, which is Black History Month, which we make a concerted effort to celebrate the accomplishments of Black history. And that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to have Eddie, our annual discussion with a special guest to talk about Black history. So today, without any further ado, we're going to talk to and bring our host in or our, our guest in. Uh, David Solomon, guy with a very, very biblical name, David Solomon. Imagine that, right? And he is a progress junkies guru. So without any further ado, hello, David. Talk to us about progress junkies, and then we're going to jump right into this uh, discussion about black history. Uh, yeah, first of all, uh, it's a pleasure to be here, guys. Thanks for uh, inviting me. Uh, progress junkies is a movement I started um, after my divorce. Um, it was a moment. It was a really dark time in my life. Lost everything. You know, nothing bad. It just it was it was just Tough time if you've been through it, right? Um, and so Progress Junkie started because I realized that the only thing I could do to change where I was at was I had to make progress. I really had to make it in some kind of way, whether in fitness, whether in running, whether in fram, I had to find some kind of way to make progress. Um, and as I started to rediscipline my, re myself, you know, I did 10 years in the Marines, um, you know, security forces for the invasion of Iraq. I started to turn inward and I found my discipline again. And when I found that, that was a wrap. I mean, running three miles in the snow. I mean, no truck. Wake up, roll out the air match next to the dog, do push-ups, doing pull-ups in the back. I mean, you know, it was, it's just I had to, I had to find myself. And so I, be, I created Progress Junkies to encourage people that, um, you know, if you marry progress, you'll give birth to greatness. But you've got to be committed to making progress every single day, no exception, no excuses. So. Well, great thing, and thank you, first of all, thank you for your service, you know, and I, mm -hmm. I did not know you were a gyrene, as it were, but you know, <laughs> you guys are on, on a special different uh, thing there, and I think that's great, so, you know, congratulations you. on all of that, but 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 talk a little bit more about some of the other stuff that it's led you to. I know you're a published author, uh, you've uh, mm -hmm. been in a couple of movies, uh, share some content, some of your content with our audience. Um, I wrote uh, my four books I've published. Um, been in two, two and a half movies. One is still in pre-production. Um, <laughs> I got a movie script that got picked up by Lionsgate. We're still waiting to hear something back on that. Um, and all, all of those things that I've done, I know it's like a jack of all trades. All of it came out of progress, you know. Um, realized that I had more, I have more abilities in me, more skill sets in me that I could create, fine tune, and add to through just making progress in it. So, you know, if you look at my resume, seeing that there is a lot of things there, but each thing, it wasn't a fly by night thing. You know, it was a two year thing that I continue making progress in. And over the time, I've been I've been blessed to master a lot of things. And those obviously gave me financially. Um, it's also given me the opportunity to, to coach people. Um, I've been in penitentiaries doing coaching. I've been on radio shows doing coaching. I've been I was coaching in the war, actually, you know, co teaching the Bible on Sunday night and shooting Monday morning. You know, so it was a. Real strange dynamic there. Um, <laughs> right, so, right, right. <laughs> um, I've done that. I've helped build ministries. I've coached pastors, apostles. I've done. A, I've been blessed to do a lot. I've been blessed to do a lot. So, yeah. Well, you know, I think that all those things that you say you have on your resume, you might say as a jack of all trades, but I bet all that stuff came together for that one purpose, you know, yeah. Everything you had to go through brought you to this point here right now where you're helping other yeah. people. That's a great thing. 
Yeah, yeah, it, it really did. I guess, um, I guess uh, uh, Steve Jobs said sometimes you can't see the path you look back and connect the dots. And when I look back and connect the dots, you know, my mother died when I was 12, so I was homeless from 12 to 17. Um, oh. I don't drink, drink, don't smoke, never been to prison. Um, so with all of those dynamics taking place in my life, you're absolutely right. That's literally what happened. It's like now I can relate to so many people on a realistic level. Um, it gives me a, a certain caliber to understand, interpret emotional intelligence when it considers my coaching. So, yeah, you're definitely That's connected. Out. That's outstanding, man. And, and before we jump into the discussion that we were going to have, I wanted to mention something. And I want to I want I'm going to put you guys on the spot. OK, I want to ask both of you to share something that you know is your contribution to black history that no one else has ever done. What have you done as Black History? And I'll share that with you after you say what you minds with you guys after you say what yours is. Eddie. Well, I have to. Why do I have to go first? <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's Black History okay. Month, man. All right. <laughs> well, I have. I have something. Okay. So. All right. Cool. Cool. Some people know this about. Some might not. But um, I was a part of the team that developed the first 24-hour live stream TV simulcast ever. And this was back wow. in early 2000. We were running Philly TV, Philly TV News, mm -hmm. a wow. black-owned TV station. And at the time, uh, there was only dial-up. There was no high-speed internet. You know, you you heard that noise when you got on the internet. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> that vinyl sound. <laughs> right. So the idea was to take this local TV station, put it online, and we put together the website, and we worked with uh, Mark Cuban, who at the time was, he had a company called Broadcast.com, and mm -hmm. he provided the link to get it done. So we worked with Mark. We did it. We were the first ones. And at the time, just as David said, we, we didn't think it was such a big deal. It was just something that we thought right. of and, and attacked. But after it was done, you had major networks that still weren't doing it. They had video clips on their website, but they didn't have a live stream that you could turn mm. any time and watch the program. And it worked. I mean, there was a couple hiccups because of the speed, but it worked and it was dependable. And when I look back, I didn't really didn't realize it till maybe 10 years ago. And mm -hmm. I said, wow, you know, we're really a part of history, not only black history, but history period, because now what we're doing right now is a product of that, you know, yeah, wow. live streaming and all that. So so that's something I'm proud of, something that I did. Outstanding, Eddie. Mm -hmm. See, I knew that. I knew that. But I was I was going to let you tell. I mean, I know there's some other stuff that you've done that's a part of crack history too. But okay, King Solomon, talk to us. Um, can't top that one. But um, what I will say, <laughs> 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 I survived Cleveland. Black history <laughs> month. No, <laughs> no, I think um something that I've done um that contributed. I, I would say that contributed. Was that I have I have literally made some very very significant sacrifices for the betterment of Black folks. Okay. All right. I've done business deals. I've lost, um, you know, money, friends, constituents over my commitment to really trying to push the 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 the, the, the mental evolution of our people. Wow. You know, we got the we got the spiritual side. We got that. We all do we do all the doom doom music, but the mental side is the issue. And so when I write my books, it, 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 it um, I have a book now that I'm working on called Poor Black and in Church, right? Um, and that's where I really address a lot of the, the, the disconnects. So I think that when it's finished, to me, that would be one of my, one of my, one of my proudest contributions to my people to, to, um, to help them make the connection, you know? So, no live streaming in the book, but I'm just, you know. It's <laughs> powerful stuff, though. I like that. I like that. Yeah, that's, that's, that's great. That's great. 
Absolutely. Well, I got two staunch contributors to Black history. Now I'm going to share mine with you all. Well, Eddie, you know me well enough to know that my, my profession has always been aviation. I was, I'm retired from the Air Force. Uh, I'm a fellow, fellow veteran, David. But I was the first and only director of Dare County Regional Airport. <clears throat> What's significant of that, about that is, is that Dare County Regional Airport is where the Wright brothers first flew. And we all know how significant aviation is today. I mean, that, that area is is like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, fraught with history. As a matter of fact, there's a mm -hmm. first flight society over there in that area because I'll say all that to say that that's my contribution to black history. A lot of people don't know that about me, but I, I was the first ever black uh, director of the of a facility there. And I, I did a lot of different stuff at that, at that airport. I brought in a lot of different uh, uh, venues and, uh, and activities and stuff that they didn't have before I got there. So there's my contribution to black history, as it were, as an African-American male. Something. And you know, I'm glad wow. you, I like I like progress junkies, just the name, you know. Yes. Because <laughs> if you're addicted to progress, that means you like doing it. That means you want to keep digging, you want to keep growing, you know, because there's some people, yeah. you know, I know you're you're a coot, so I know you can relate to this, Dave. So a lot of times you you're told to set goals in life, right? And mm. what I found is when you really succeed is when you set a goal you may reach that goal but that just means you set another goal right exactly you, continue, you just continue you never stop there is no there is no top you know really there is no apex because you can always get better you can always you know help somebody else get better yeah i think um my mentor when i was in university of south carolina dr charles herman blake was actually friends with the late al shabazz um mm -hmm. he told me something i never forgot it he says, son, there's something called the peak peak theory. It was his theory. And it was that whenever a man reaches a certain plateau, he looks up and he notices there's another one over there. <laughs> he said, and the goal is you keep spending your life in the valley, getting the strength to go to the next one. Then you go back down in the valley, get the strength, and you spend your whole life until you finally make that last trip up and you go home. And I think... Um, Making progress a way of life is the only way to me to really experience happiness. Because as humans, we're wired to only feel happy when we get better at something. That's it. Right. You get depressed and mad when you realize you're in the same spot you've been in and ain't that working. Right. But when you make progress, there's a certain level of a certain inertia that takes place in you, and you get addicted to that. You really get addicted to it because most people are addicted to quitting. <laughs> That's a great point. Well, but, but listen, guys. Yeah. I, that's a good example. Let me, let, me, let me share one thing and we're going to take a quick break. To me, it's kind of like the difference between sound and light. Sound bounces off and it's only going to go but so far. But light, unless it's blocked, it'll continue to go into infinity. And that's what we're talking about. Progress Junkies. We're yeah. talking about light. We're talking about black achievement. This is the Book of Dad radio show. I'm mm -hmm. Dr. Robert Benson with my main man, Eddie G. And we're hanging out with David Solomon, Progress Junkie guy. We'll be right back. <laughs> You have something special. You have greatness in you. Hello, I'm Les Brown, Mrs. Mamie Brown's baby boy. I want you to spread the word to your family members and friends to listen to lesbrowngreatnessradio.com. Absolutely. And let me share with you why we're going to be focusing on positive things. Because whatever you focus on the longest becomes the strongest. And now more than ever, when the suicide rate has increased over 33%, when the suicide rate of young children between 5 and 11 has doubled, people feeling hopeless and stressed out and powerless, we need programming that can bring out the greatness in them. And that's what we will be focused on. When you listen, it will be an experience that will transform your life. Les Brown, GreatnessRadio.com. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. See why listeners from over 150 countries around the world follow the Book of Dad radio show. Join Dr. Robert Benson and Eddie G as they chat with special guests who share their stories and information that will change your life. Watch and listen on lifeandspiritonline.com or subscribe to the Book of Dad radio show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or wherever you get your podcast. Brought to you by the NASCA Network.
Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Book of That radio show with Dr. Robert Benson and me, Eddie G. Today, we have an excellent guest, David Solomon, who is with Progress Junkies. He is a motivator. He's a coach. He's a, uh, an author, a leader. It's great to have you on the, so on the show today, Dave. Uh, give us a little more insight on what you see uh, moving forward, your next moves in the Progress Junkies. Um, my next move with Progress Junkies, we were actually working on something now, is I'm noticing that among the black community, our community, we are, uh, you know, we need money, we got to work things of that nature. But I'm noticing there's a gap in between the understanding of the power of e-commerce and our people, right? Um, and I think that my next, well, my next move right now is to actually start training and teaching minorities how to build e-commerce platforms so they can start living off of their laptops and have to stop going out working 16 hours or single moms working two doubles. It's a way out of that. And so I think for me, for Progress Junkies to be a blessing and also um, a help is that I'm going to start teaching people the, the skills that I've developed and I've honed. Um, they said 400 people free. That's the goal. It goes to 400 entrepreneurs to create 400 online entrepreneurs. That, that's the next goal for Progress Junkies. Okay. Hmm. Well, that's great. Uh, Progress Junkies is definitely a, a, an outstanding initiative. So at this point, we want to shift gears. We want to kind of dig a little deeper into our past. We talked about how challenging 2020 was, and that's, that's you know, in the defense of some people we have because of COVID-19 and some of the other things that were going on, the election. I mean, my, my goodness, it was like a stacked deck of uh, you know negative cards. But I think we're gonna, we've gotten through a lot of it. I think we're going to be just fine. So uh, now we can circle back and, and let's look at some of the things that have contributed to us being the people that we are today, free, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom of commerce, as you guys have all alluded to. So from this point, I want to get each one of you to pick two things and expound on them surrounding black history. And I'm not going to pick on you first this time, Ed. OK, but there's two things I want you guys to think about. All right. One is I want you to think about the industry that was the most significant to black history, to black people and to an individual within that industry that contributed to the uh, current state of affairs on a positive level for African-Americans. OK, since both of you guys went mm -hmm. first the last time, I'm going to go first this time, take the pressure off you both. OK, me <clears throat> being an intellectual person on some levels, when I'm not being a knucklehead half the time, I, I am quite intellectual, you know, from time to time, you know. OK. But <laughs> <laughs> I think I, <laughs> I think that academics and, and uh, uh, intellectualism is very important to African-American people because I think that we, on so many different fronts, subject ourselves to the negative uh, stereotyping of behaviors and such. I think we lock ourselves into we can only be successful through athleticism and entertainment. While those are positive things, that it's not the only thing I think that we should be associated with on a positive level. So to keep from hogging up things, I'm going to get to the point and say this. I think science is significant to African-American development and respect as uh, competent between the ears, uh, 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 thought provoking and develop, developed people. The one person I'd like to zero in on for this particular discussion is George Washington Carver. Why George Washington Carver? <clears throat> George Washington Carver was born into slavery. Okay. His slave master was a German American, believe it or not. So that swastika, swastika uh, uh, sporting we see right now goes from a long time ago. Yet this guy managed to finish college. He became one of the most revered scientists in history. He developed ways to use and preserve soil that was never heard of before. Everybody thinks about George Washington Carver. They think about peanuts and such like that. But this guy's intellectual and his, his success and his contributions to, to science and farming goes a whole lot deeper than a lot of people realize. So that's my story, as Les Brown would say, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> science and George Washington Carver. Okay, who's next? All right, I, I, I'll go next. I'll go next because yes. <laughs> I'm working with you, David. I'm working with you, brother. So <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and lie and say, I have a person. 
because I don't. Okay. Right? <laughs> but I do think that the area that has progressed uh, African Americans the most would be in civil rights and in politics. And there are a few, there's a few people that I think have contributed to that. I mean, there's a long list, but I think that when we, when we look at where we have come and any progress we've made, I think that it has mostly been in law, right? Even though the legal okay. system is not equal, it is still uh, not an even playing field. But those mm -hmm. are the doorways that were open that allow us to uh, participate in certain ways. If you look at, you know, the school system, um, you look at uh, the legal system, and it goes up to the health health system. Uh, there's so many ways and so many different African Americans who have played a part that we have never even heard their names, you know, and that's why I can't pick a person, right? Because no one is. I, I don't believe. Like we always hear Martin Luther King and, excuse me, and uh, different people like that. But everybody knows about them. But there's so many that are unsung heroes. They all contributed. They all sacrificed. Uh, they, some of them died for where we are today. And their name is yeah. not going across the lips of the general public. So I think we need to honor those who have fought that we don't know their names and have contributed, like maybe our parents, maybe our grandparents. If you go back and do some genealogy, you'd be surprised on what you would find in your own family history, your own genealogy that has yeah. had uh, great accomplishments for African American society. So that's mm. what I have. Wow. Okay. Mm. Well, I, if you can't make it, you can't mention the name. I'm going to mention a couple if you don't mind. Okay. Thurgood Marshall. Mm. Thurgood Marshall. Um, Barack Obama, I mean, who can, I mean, we, we're talking about black history and, con and contributions to political and, and, and law and such, you know, I mean, come on, <laughs> hey, there Bill, you go, you right? Messed, you messed up with David, that was his guy, man. Oh, okay. uh, oh my bad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, you still can talk about it, but you can still talk about it. <laughs> but the other thing. <laughs> Let's get the commercial. <laughs> <laughs> but the other thing I would say is, is this is profound to me because law is in everything. I mean, mm -hmm. everything is impacted by law. And you have lawyers who specialize in every genre that it possibly is. So, wow, well, I think that's a great, uh, great uh, area to focus on. Okay, so, hey, David, you're not off the hook, though. We're going to give you this last minute or so <laughs> to talk. Um, and then what's we'll that, uh, point points some other was, uh, was this, uh, Obama's on the floor now. We're going to leave him alone. Um, I would have to say, <laughs> since I started acting and being in movies, um, I have a newfound respect for Denzel Washington, right? A very new, I knew him as an actor. But what I've noticed when I started to research him, he has been such an advocate for African Americans picking roles that are not stereotypical. He's like really, really pushed the issue. Now, being in entertainment, there's a listen. If you think the race thing is the issue in the law, it is a monster in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. It is an absolute. It is so open. It's almost like you got Jim Crow signs up. It is that bad. And he's been a very strong advocate um, because I mean, Black Panther is one. A lot of people look at it as a movie as entertainment, but what he did was Denzel's pushing led to a young actor taking over and re-sparking black pride in the nation. Very, very big. You know, black people are walking around with kidney cloth going to see movies, you know, that, that wasn't happening. Right. Like it it, it it woke it back up. So to me, I would have to say Denzel was a very, very integral role in that and he assisted us with that. Also Tyler Perry the obvious. Uh, but I would have to say for me, entertainment and how Denzel did that. Wow. You know, it's interesting you mentioned that because we have a good friend who's been on our show a couple of times, Christopher Mann. And he's a, a very renowned actor right now. He's been in a couple of great uh, products or productions, I should say. 
And he said mm -hmm. that exactly what you're saying is that there's a stereotypical uh, categorization and locking in and boxing in of black entertainers. So we'll talk a little bit more about that yeah. when we come back. This is Dr. Robert Benson with my main man, Eddie G. In the David Solomon, the biblical name guy, who has a great uh, initiative going on. And we'll talk a little bit more about uh, black history and, and our contributions to it. We'll be right back. Dr. Robert Benson, Book of That Radio Show. NASCA Network. And we'll be right back. You have something special. You have greatness in you. Hello, I'm Les Brown, Mrs. Mamie Brown's baby boy. I want you to spread the word to your family members and friends to listen to Les Brown Greatness Radio. Dot com. Absolutely. And let me share with you why we're going to be focusing on positive things. Because whatever you focus on the longest becomes the strongest. And now more than ever, when the suicide rate has increased over 33%, when the suicide rate of young children between 5 and 11 has doubled, people feeling hopeless and stressed out and powerless, we need programming that can bring out the greatness in them. And that's what we will be focused on. When you listen, it will be an experience that will transform your life. Les Brown, GreatnessRadio.com. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. See why listeners from over 150 countries around the world follow the Book of Dad radio show. Join Dr. Robert Benson and Eddie G as they chat with special guests who share their stories and information that will change your life. Watch and listen on lifeandspiritonline.com or subscribe to The Book of Dad Radio Show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or wherever you get your podcast. Brought to you by the NASCA Network. Hey, and we're right back. Dr. Robert Benson, Book of Dad Radio Show. Only on Life and Spirit Online, NASCA Network. Download us, check us out, any place you get your podcasts, and we have some links on YouTube as well. So please stay with us, continue to check us out. We really appreciate your support for the show. I know we got quite a few folks that check us out uh, worldwide. Thanks to Eddie G, though, because he's an engineer extraordinaire and he gets the content out. And, uh, you know, we I think we got a pretty good following. So please continue to do that. And the reason why we are who we are and do what we do is because we have great guests that come in and talk with us about great topics like we do right now. So we were left off, we left off talking about black history and we were talking about the entertainment industry. We're going to ask King David Solomon to kick back in and talk to us a little bit more about some of the uh, things that's going on in the entertainment issue in, in industry. David, please. Uh, um, I'm not, like I said, the, the stereotype thing is kind of a, that's the issue. That's a really hard thing. Uh, either uh, black women, they get cast in as loud mouths. Um, they don't get the, 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 the intellectually sound sister or she gets the intellectually sound sister that has deep stereotypes about the black guy. There's always some type of negative um, undertone or connotation towards a black man in all the films that becomes the climax, right? It's, <laughs> is it he's really that bad or she's really that wrong? But it's never oh, a neutral story. Um, and I think that 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 that's a that's something we're still trying to trying to evolve with, um, and not to bring up anything controversial, but for me also, a lot of people know this about Bill Cosby, uh, prior to his um, predicament, is that when Bill did the um, a lot of guys don't know that when he did the Cosby Show, Bill paid a psychologist to walk through the set to make sure there was no undertoning stuff set up that gave a negative connotation to a black family. Like he made sure that subconsciously we weren't being programmed to see anything negative on his show, you know, and in going to such great lengths to maintain a positive image for our people, we see the long term reaction to that. Because now when you look at television, there's only two shows where you had the black dad and the family that was rock. Remember that rock, the garbage man and his family. Yeah. I love that. Right. Yeah. And it was the Cosby show. Anything that shows black love, black families, a black man with a job, with a black wife, and some dark black kids. No. Everything is, you know what I'm talking about? Look at the commercials. Yeah. All the commercials, yeah. the semi lights can go with the curly hair. It ain't never the chocolate, baby. It ain't, it ain't the shower. She ain't there. Right. It's the, it's the light skinned girl with the curly hair. It's always that. And I yeah. think in the entertainment world, um, that, that, that's something that, you know, we, we still evolving. But it's, it, when, you, when you're in it, you can see it. 
But 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 to go back to you, David, you said about black fathers being in a in in, in the home. A show that Ed and I kind of differ on is Good Times. Remember Good Times yeah. with uh, James Evans and yeah. the crew. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I hated yeah. I, I hated that show. But Ed pointed Ed pointed out that yeah, it was a he was a positive guy. He was there as a black man who was there for his family. So I I, I I get that stereotypical thing. But let's shift gears a little bit. Why do y'all think that right now all of these shows that you're seeing, you're seeing these uh, African American minority women linked up with with Caucasian men? Do you think, and this is a stretch, it has anything to do with the new vice president? No, that's that's nothing new. I I don't think mm-hmm. that that's something that just happened. I think, as no. a matter of fact, I I think that's something that's happening in the country. You know what I mean? That, mm. you know, hey, when we were kids, you didn't see that. You didn't see that kind of Did thing. Did not see it. But, but now, it's no problem. I, I don't mm. think it's a bad thing, right? Um, we have mm, that's good. Perspectives on it, right? But yeah, yeah. It, at least everybody's, at least on TV, everybody's getting together, getting along fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way we're getting along. <laughs> I mean, okay. I, I would have to say it's two things with that, and this is me. Um, one is is white people running the networks, right? Mm-hmm. So they're never going to paint a picture that shows them historically accurately right they're not going to do that every picture they paint is going to put them as the benefactor right um like a white jesus okay there was no white people mm-hmm. in a desert when it's 95 degrees all day we know that ain't happening right okay but you know just we just be is that we just being honest just being totally honest ain't no ain't no white jesus right if we know that and that's we all know that to be true and it doesn't change anything it's fine, right? But when it comes to the black net or white, uh, our system with the white guys on television, again, I think what they're trying to do, and I hate to say it, I think that white America has realized that keeping us here for so long, you have messed around and bought something in the house that you can, you no longer can control, right? Hmm. You can't now. We become the fantasy, right? First, we were the joke. Right. Now where everybody, everything we touch as black people, we add, we add style, and we add something to it. Right. And now, I mean, let's be honest, we are what we are. I mean, you can't, you couldn't stop us. You couldn't stop us in slavery. You couldn't stop us when we got free. You couldn't stop the church when the Pentecostals had to split from church and God. You couldn't stop us. You couldn't beat us in Africa. You couldn't be Hannibal of Carthage. You. It makes sense why they oppress us. You can't beat us. It's like, you can't whoop us. Mm-hmm. I get it. So I think the reason they do it is they want to try to get people more accepting of it because the truth of the matter, they're losing their grip on America. You're dying off. That whole racist regime, they're getting old. Mm-hmm. Now Mr. Um, Mr. Brzezinski has a daughter named Becky. Becky fell in love with Tyrone. Now they got this mixed baby named Curtis. <laughs> yeah. They ain't changing Right. And that the younger, that's what I'm saying. The younger generation is kind of kicking some of that stuff to the curb, right? They don't care. They don't care about that. I, I see so many young people, and you know, people say, I don't see color. I mean, you got to see color, but <clears throat> it's not a factor. I'm saying that it's not a, it's not a big deal. Like you said, the older generation where they're hung up on this stupid thing about color they're dying off, just like you said. So it, I think it's, it's becoming a better situation. Hmm. Yeah, I think well, in guys, due time, we're going to be out right Yeah. Hmm. Well, guys, you know, this is a great conversation. So this is part one of the show. We're going to have to do this again, okay? So with that said, King David, give us some closing thoughts and talk a little bit about what you got going on. And uh, happy Black History um, to you, man. Thanks. <laughs> you too, sir. Um, I, would, I would like to say um, to all the listeners, don't give up. That's my biggest listen. Don't give up. I've been homeless three times being an entrepreneur. Mm. I have four college degrees, two undergrads, two MBAs. I've had multiple companies. I've been uh, stereotyped. I've been arrested for things I didn't do. I don't. Whatever you do, black man or black woman, whoever's watching this, do not give up. 
The dream can be realized, but you're going to have to embrace the fact that you're going to have to fight for it. If my ancestor can pick cotton for 30 hours, you know, 25 hours a day and not quit, why are you walking out, why are you walking out the ring? Yep. You know, wow. stick with it. Stick with it. That's good stuff. Well, Eddie G, uh, closing remarks. Hey, I'm I'm just glad we got this guy on today. My new buddy, right. David. <laughs> <laughs> because look, bottom line is this. We need more positive role models for our young guys and young women coming up. And yeah. what you're doing, coaching, inspiration, that's what people need. Because just as you said, when things get tough, you have to have Sometimes you need outside inspiration. Sometimes you need somebody to not to, to push you or even pull you up the hill. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So yeah. I think the more the more we find positive people like yourself to do that, the better off we're going to be. Mm -hmm. I understand. Yeah. Thank you. All right. All right. As usual, man, you, you've always uh, hit the nail on the head. And David, thank you so much for joining us on the Book of Dad radio show. And as I said before, thank we got to get you back because this is this discussion is not over. We got to do this again and talk to you some more. But uh, I'd like to close out this. Oh, absolutely. But, you know, there's a saying uh, that you and people who are very, very religious and uh, biblical or, or spiritual say is that I'm not where I am, where I ought to be, but I'm definitely not where I, I, I used to be. So that's the kind of way I kind of look at the thing with us as black people. Yeah, of course. Yeah, we're definitely not where we were. We could be a little bit better off, but Things ain't that bad. Keep the faith, my brother, like you said before. Keep the faith. But book of that radio show of Dr. Robert Benson, I'll close out with a quote, and it goes like this. Is that sometimes being told you're worthless is better than silence. Book of that radio show of Dr. Robert Benson, and we'll talk to you next time.